Welcome to the GP Llama YouTube channel and hot on the heels of the recent firmware updates we saw for the Edge 530, 830 and 1030 series is quite a significant feature upgrade for the Edge 1040 series. Now I've been using a number of these features in beta for the last little while. This week they've hit the public release and should be available for your unit. Now we are seeing quite the separation now between the X30 and the X40 series. If I was a betting man, I'd say a number of these features are what we can expect to see if Garmin ever launched the 540 and 840. But that's all just speculation. For now, we have the 1040. Let's dig into a few of these significant options and what they're all about. First line item today is added support for high traffic roads, including map display and navigation warning messages. So here I am on the gravel bike approaching Highway 8 here in country Victoria sometimes a busy road and up comes the warning high traffic roads ahead now i'm not quite sure how useful this is if you're familiar with the roads that you're riding probably not that useful or if you haven't planned ahead it could be useful however like the sharp bend warning that i always disable this may not come in that handy on a day-to-day -day basis next we have added support for events including a primary event and event calendar glance so loading up Garmin Connect calendar here and scrolling down to, well, today's the 23rd. Tomorrow I have Festive 500 Day 1 kicking off, which is an event that I have created. Over on the 1040 itself, I have its race day. Well, actually, tomorrow's race day. So, okay, 1040, you're a bit ahead of yourself there. And then clicking on that, it goes into the Festive 500 Day 1, which is in 20 hours. Clicking on that again, I have some more details on the event coming up. So that's the glance there over on the left, and it takes us through to the event or scheduled race or whatever I want to call it there over on the right. Next up is added support for upcoming daily suggested workouts. So clicking on training workouts, daily suggested workouts, and you can see a list of things uh, today and coming up this week on the head unit. Added support for live event sharing appears to be Android only. So here is an Android phone connected to the 1040. We go to safety tracking, live event sharing, and here is all the configuration available here so we turn that on and as you start your event it will then start sending out messages automatically garmin don't have the ability to send messages via an ios device or an apple device so this is limited or appears to be limited to android only for now and there are a few configuration options there added support for spectator messaging is something i've covered in beta on the channel here so just a quick overview of that there's now a send message if you have these messages enabled on your unit and when out doing a ride people can send you a message via Garmin live track you can put here from let's go Father Christmas coming soon hit send and that message will appear on your head unit there we go over there on the left now this doesn't require LTE for your device as it did for Garmin wearables. This uses the data connection from your mobile phone, which does require LTE or cell service to get that data connection through and the messages to your, uh, to your head unit. There's another one from Daniel there. Thanks for sharing this. Keep up the great work. I was tweeting out my live track links for people to test this. So one thing with this, it's been a little flaky starting and stopping and some of the messages have been delayed. So I expect Garmin to be smoothing this out soon, hopefully. Now, unfortunately, the next line item, I don't have an answer for. I have no idea what this is. The added support for heart rate confidence metric. No amount of Googling or diving through the menus and pairing different heart rate straps could get an answer on this one. If you know what this is, please let us know in the comments below and we'll all learn something new today. Next up is added ride button to segment details page. So I've gone training, segments, Cuthbert's Road, and there's a blue ride button there. Once clicked, it will give you navigation to the start of that segment where you can then start writing the segment. Added Shimano DI2 adjustment mode support. If you have a DI2 group set with a wireless module either built in or added, once it's in adjustment mode, it will pop up with this screen here. Now you can't do any adjustments from the head unit. It will just give you the information on screen. Clicking again will take you out of that mode and back to normal operation. Now to a feature we saw recently added to the X30 series. So 1030, 830, 530. And that is in relation to the RCT715 rear radar camera and light device. And it's something we wanted from day one. And that is, as you can see here on screen, once the video is recording, we have a little recording icon at the top. Letting us know that the camera is recording. And with the mode that I have set on here, which is only record when a vehicle is detected, it will then continue to record for the next 60 seconds and that icon will disappear. 
If it's saving a video after an incident has taken place, it will then say saving up the top there too. But this is a really, really good addition to the RSC T715 when paired with an edge unit. It gives you more confidence in knowing exactly what the camera is doing or not doing. The camera does need to be paired as a light device, not just a radar for these icons to work. Okay, jumping ahead to one that I think is pretty cool, and that is Improved Climb Pro Data Screen and Climb List. So loading up the five climbs router that I use here quite often in Ballarat, over there on the right, you can see the summary of each climb, two, three, five, as you scroll across. It's a little more detailed and gives you more information on each climb in the preview. Out on the road, there doesn't appear to be any change to the Climb Pro operation. So here is the climb coming up on both the Edge Explore 2 and the 1040 Solar with the updated firmware, and they look about the same as they did before. Jumping ahead to on the climb itself and comparing the updated Edge 1040 to the not updated Edge Explore 2, they look very much one for one the same. Though that little box with the 4% grade shown on the 1040 Solar may be a new addition. I'm not quite sure. Now look, while we're here, let's have a look at the gradient lag to see if there's been any improvement in that area. Now, unfortunately, the screen record option has been removed from this firmware on the Edge unit. So I'm going to have to talk you through this and pull up a screen grab a little bit later down the road. So I'm just about to top out and go down quite a steep little grade here. I'll just forward through here until we get to the bottom. Okay, it's about here. I'm now on, well, it's about a negative one, negative two percent. But then we wait a few seconds, do a screen grab on both units. 1040 Solar still believes I'm on negative 13 for now. The other one was still negative eight. So it's not until about 10 to 12 seconds later, the gradients change to really what they should be. This road itself around here is probably negative two, negative three percent on a downhill. I'll do another screen grab about here. With the 1040 Solar reading negative three and the Edge Explore on negative four. So yeah, still quite a bit laggy. One more example of that as I top out on another climb. You can hear both Garmin's finishing the climb. So climb complete, that would be 0%. But it's not until this right hand turn, about 10 to 12 seconds later, that both Garmin's read zero and it's like going into the negative gradient shown on screen so again confirmation of around 10 to 12 seconds lag on the gradient information shown on screen okay so that covers off the interesting feature additions and enhancements of the 1040 with this firmware update the rest there on the list are just miscellaneous fixes and small improvements this firmware rollout is at 100 percent so it should be popping up on your screen anytime soon if you want to force that plug your unit into a USB cable, load up Garmin Express on Mac or PC, and do that sync. It should then appear, unplug the cable, do your reboot, and you're good to go. Now, as I said, I expect to see most of those features roll out if Garmin ever get around to releasing, say, a 540 or an 840, but for now, it's all about the 1040. And with that, we'll leave it there. As always, thumbs up if you found this informative. Hit subscribe to be across more videos uploaded to this channel. And with that, it's a Merry Christmas. We'll see you soon.